Happy Monday, FlossTube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name's Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I record um, videos here in London, Ontario, Canada, and this is the channel mostly about cross stitch and some knitting, some sewing, all the good crafty things. I have a lot, I have a lot to share today. I got a lot done this weekend, so I've been super excited to share everything with you because it's not often that I have this much, this much progress. Okay, but the first thing I'm gonna start with is a giveaway. I, where is it? Here it is. Um, this is from a couple weeks ago, so not last week, but the week before, the Monday before. I had a dimensions kit up for giveaway over on the Facebook group, Friday Off the Grid Facebook group. And uh, it is to have and to hold. And the comment that was chosen was for Amanda Eddings. And Amanda, I've already left you a comment on your comment. And if you could please email me your address, I will get this in the mail to you. This is a really sweet kit. Um, comes with everything that is needed to do the design. So the Ada is the Ada cloth is in there and all of the thread, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's really sweet. I always love teal and brown together. It's a really nice combination. Anyways, congratulations, Amanda. I hope you enjoy stitching this. The new chart up for grabs today, because it's Monday, is, this is a design by, it's actually four charts in one. This is from My Big Toe Cross Stitch Designs, and it's called Christmas Pinkies 5. Um, I've actually stitched one of these, believe it or not. This is, so here's the chart, and so there's four ornament designs, and I've actually stitched this one. Uh, you know what? I actually have it here. This is, I thought it was at home, but it's actually here. Hang on a second, I'll show you. Look, there it is, see? So I, um, I stitched this, actually, this, this pattern was in, the Joy pattern was in one of the just cross stitch ornament magazines. I don't remember which year, um, but I just picked some floss that I had in my stash uh, and stitched it. So I can't even tell you, it's not the called for colors. Can you tell the blue is totally different? Um, and then I just, I finished it into a little hanging ornament and used some of my I love this fabric. This is a partridge in a pear tree fabric that I had just some scraps left over. Hopefully I can get that to focus. It's quite late in the day here today. There we go. Isn't it pretty? And a little pear charm. This was um, one of the attendees at the, one of the Hamilton stitch-ins uh, handed out welcome cards with a charm inside each of them and so i attached it to my to my ornament stuffed it put a hanger on it and i'd keep this up year round because well it doesn't have to be christmas so this chart has all four of these designs in it uh, joy faith love and hope and so this will be up for giveaway this week you can find the giveaway entry over on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid, and I will put a photo up later today after the video is up. Sometimes I forget because it takes a while between the time that I record the video and the time that it goes up, and sometimes I am a little forgetful about posting the photo on the group, but I, I get to it eventually. So, um, and you can leave, just leave me a comment on the photo that you'll see in that group. I also usually try to mark it as an announcement so that it pops up at the top of the group. So I will send that out anywhere. I am quite behind. I know I say this often, but in case you are waiting for a giveaway from me, I'm a little bit behind in setting them out. I hope to get caught up on that this week. That's the plan. Uh, okay, so before I get into what I worked on this weekend, I should tell you where I was this weekend. So um, if you follow me over on Instagram, I have my more personal uh, feed, which is at Off The Grid Needle Arts. 
I have another um, Instagram feed for my project bag business um, and the Leo and Roxy floss, uh, cotton overdyed floss, which is at Ever Totes. Um, the, all the information is in the drop down box below. So I already shared this on my, my personal Instagram page when we got home on Sunday that uh, we, we went up north this weekend. We loaded up the car, I mean it was planned wasn't just spur of the moment because uh, where I live here in Ontario, we are still in lockdown for another, I think we're in lockdown still for at least another two weeks. And so uh, we had to really carefully plan, you know, we had to pack in everything and, and we only stopped for gas. So uh, we didn't stop anywhere else. We have, we don't use a marina. We have, the, the boat was already put in the water from the marina right before the lockdown happened. Um, they were able to get many of their customers' boats kind of loaded into the water. And they emailed John and said, "We it's in, keys are in the boat, hop over and pick it up whenever you can. So we were able to uh, to, to get over. Um, and Nicholas had his birthday at the cottage. And this was the first year that, uh, this was the earliest that I have ever been up there, uh, ever. I've never made it up before the beginning of May, so this was very, very early for me. Um, if, if you're new here, this is the, the reason for my channel, Off the Grid Needle Arts, is that um, we have a uh, cabin up in Northern Ontario, in Georgian Bay, Ontario, and it is on an island um, off the grid. We have uh, solar power, uh, generator, and propane. And so I, uh, it used to be that I would, well, it used not used to be. Lots of people have asked, what's going to happen this summer now that you've, you know, um, expanded the business? Are you still going to be moving up to the cabin this summer? And the answer to that is no, I will not be moving up north this summer. It's a, it's a big change for our family this year. Um, it's not a, you know, it's not a forever and ever amen kind of thing, but for this summer, I think it's, you know, pretty clear that that's just not something that's sort of in the cards for me, um, being that I now have to pay rent. So, <laughs> um, you know, I think that that's, uh, that's pretty understandable. So the plan is that occasionally we, we will be able to go up uh, as a family for long weekends, um, John will be able to go up when he can with, uh, with the kids or whoever wishes to go up with him. Um, my father-in-law is up there now, but I suspect he'll probably, I'm not sure that he'll stay up there on his own the whole summer. So those kinds of things are still up in the air. Anyways, so that's where I was this weekend. We had some, we had some exciting, exciting nature goings on this weekend. Uh, those of you, again, if you've been here for a while and you've heard the, the cabin stories for a while, the cottage stories, uh, a couple of years ago, we had a mother bear and two cubs. And uh, it's not uncommon for us to have a bear on the island. They're quite territorial and they require quite a lot of space. So uh, the island that we are on is approximately 75 acres in size. Um, there are four other uh, cottages on the same island, different families and but the majority of the land is crown land and uh and so it is it, the middle of the island and the one side of it is 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 wild um and frankly where we are it's, it's it's very it's not your sort of typically sort of built up cottage type thing it's still it's it's very basic cabin in the woods um so yeah, a few years ago we had a mother bear and cubs. Last year we had at least one sort of junior bear. There might have been two, but we think we, we think it was probably the same bear. This year we have coyotes. <laughs> I know. I, this was the the We've never had coyotes on the island. I can't remember hearing of neighbors having coyotes on their on their islands. I'm sure they've been there. It's just it's it's very unusual. Um, so what happened was John and Nicholas had gone for 
uh, there, there's part of the crown land in the middle of the island is, okay, so it would be easier if I could show you video of this, but you'll see, uh, no, it's okay. So there's a part of rock in the middle of the island that's flat. I know it, it doesn't seem possible, but uh, Georgian Bay is part of the, there's, it's part of Canadian Shield. So Canadian Shield is, is very, very rocky terrain and, and really stu stunningly beautiful. But there's this one section of, of the island sort of in the middle and it's this huge flat area where there's a lot of rocks, of course, that, that have come together and it's made this sort of really smooth surface. And maybe the next time I'm up there, um, I'll go up there and I'll take a little bit of video in the middle there of the island so you can see it because it's, it's really quite unique. But they had, it, it's where they like to go and throw the football with each other because they can actually uh, run a little bit without tripping over a rock because it's fairly, it's a fairly large flat area. So they took the football up there and they were they were playing catch. And then uh, when they were coming back, fortunately they hadn't taken Luna with them. They don't take Luna when they play football with each other. Luna, Luna is our dog. Um, she's quite a large American bulldog mix. They didn't take her because she, of course, tries to catch the ball and she's not always gentle with her teeth when she is going after the ball. So they've learned very quickly not to take Luna with them when they are playing catch. So they were on their way back and they stumbled across uh, two pups who were just kind of out in the open and John was a little bit concerned because no parents to be seen. Now they didn't get all that close to them but close enough that they could tell that the, the pups were very very small and so he was like I think the, the mother has he thought they were fox and so he, he said, I think the mother has abandoned them. There's, there's, there's no parent around, you know, they're, they're out in the open and they're not even hidden. And he thought that they maybe looked a little weak and that we should maybe take over a dish of water or something. And so, um, he was quite concerned <laughs> about the pups, about the pups. So Nicholas and I went back to where he, they had found them and um and very carefully just sort of you know stood our distance and and looked and it became very apparent that they were not fox because they weren't the right color for for fox but also there was nothing wrong with these pups and not only were there two there were four there were four pups perfectly healthy like like tiny 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 little pups very very healthy it was clear that they were being well cared for which meant that there was either one or a, a pair of parents nearby. So, you know, I, I knew that we, you can't feed them, you can't try to touch them, you can't do anything. Um, and so I just, because we were there, I took a little video clip and uh, I'll put that in here for you so that you can see there. <laughs> they were so beautiful. So here you go. Don't go any closer.
playing. How do you play? I know. <laughs> the desire to cuddle them is very strong, but we we did not approach. I when I when I zoomed in, that was just done with the camera zoom. We did not get any closer to them and uh and then we we left them alone. They are fortunately Fortunately, they are on the other side of the island from where our cabin is. And so Luna it, it's probably, you know what, timing is really funny, isn't it? Because this is the first summer that I won't be living up there with a big dog uh, for the entire summer. And, you know, there's, there's about to be, you know, a whole pile of coyotes on that island. So from what we've read, uh, as they grow and as they get bigger, there, there won't be enough food to sustain the whole, the, the, the number of them that are there. And so those that survive, uh, will likely move move out into the other islands. They do swim, they know how to swim. Uh, and what can be a little bit confusing about where we are, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with Georgian Bay, um, it's known as the, uh, there are thousands of islands, like little teeny tiny islands up there. And so they're not all that far apart, you know, as the crow flies, they're, they're quite close together. And so it would be very easy for an animal who can swim to sort of island hop, from, you know, from, from one to the other searching for food. So, uh, you know, circle of life, it's, it's good to have them there, um, for some of the other sort of perhaps mice, you know, mice population that, uh, have been growing. <laughs> steadily the last couple of years so that's not always a bad thing but there aren't there, there there probably isn't enough food for that many but anyways we're on the other side so the concern of luna luna has a very strong prey drive she's got a great a great nose she's very on high alert of you know about smells and things like that so you know she would probably try to give chase or um, I, I wouldn't trust her to, to go in and after the, the pups. So we would never take her anywhere close to that, to the den or anything like that. So I'm really glad that we found it before we'd done a, you know, a walk with, with her or that she wasn't with them when they'd gone over there. So, uh, it, it, it worked out quite well. So, you know, we're, we're aware of it. We're aware of them. And by now they're very aware of us. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting, an interesting thing to watch, I think. So I hope you enjoyed that video. So I've been looking forward to, uh, to sharing that. Okay. So do you want to see what stitching I got done this weekend? Oh my good gravy. I had such a good time. Okay. So I told you that I, I left it at home. I can't believe I did that. I left it at home. I finished. My, my, I finished my, my Quaker distal, my ugh, modern folk embroidery, Jacobs distal fink hearts. I finished it and I don't have it here to prove it to you that I finished it. But of course I did. It was the very first thing that I did before I worked on anything else and I finished it. So I'm going to have to save that little hurrah for the next video that I record. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I left that at home, um, but I did finish it and it's beautiful. And I'm looking forward to FFOing that into a pillow because I do have another FFO. Ta-da! <laughs> I did fully finish another pillow, but I did not do the stitching here, but I did finish this. So I sewed the pillow together myself. This beautiful stitching was done by a viewer named Mary Ellen, who knows that my son Nicholas is a huge Baltimore Ravens football fan and she stitched this for me last year um, along with another viewer who stitched an, another beautiful Baltimore Ravens logo for my son. I mean, how lucky can I be? 
and it has taken me until now to get around to the finishing and so to do it justice I took my time I finally ordered the correct size pillow form this is a oh, it's an 18 inch pillow form and then I had some really fun I have had this flannelette in my stash for years and it is so cozy and soft and at the moment Nicholas's favorite color is lime green and there is a really wonderful fun stripe of lime green in there and I just think it goes so beautifully with this with the stitched piece and so I just cut out you know I, I cut out my fabric and seamed it together top stitch the piecing and then put it together made made my pillow so see I finally FFO'd it Mary Ellen and it's a hit let me tell you it's a big big hit so next up on my finishing list is is the piece that is the small um, the smaller one that Carrie stitched for me and I'm still on the fence I'm pretty positive I'm gonna make it into a device sleeve for him because even if it doesn't fit one device it'll fit another one you know they all change shapes and sizes but it'll be a very useful pouch and it'll be something that he can use isn't that great I love it and it's so cozy this flannelette is just it's so nice and so he's gonna he's just gonna use this a ton and it can stay on our couch so ta-da I fully finished that beautiful Ravens pattern Mary Ellen thank you again for stitching that for me it was just it was uh, it's it was just really kind and Nicholas loves it so thank you okay the stitching that I did this weekend on top of my distal think heart that I finished and can't show you I worked on the two pieces that I told you I was going to get to. The first one uh, was my Quaker Diamonds. So this is a Rosewood Manor piece. Looks like that. I've been working on this for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> very long time. This predates my Philosophy channel, which I've been recording videos for three and a half years now. So. Um, Oh, the I'm I'm using a floss conversion from Vicky Clayton uh, HDF hand dyed fibers uh, from the first time she was dyeing silk. She stopped for a number of years, and uh, she is dye she is dyeing floss again. Somebody left me a funny comment about that. Like she's dying again? What? What? She's dyeing floss again, and you can find her on Facebook group Facebook under Vicky Clayton. HDF, I think, or Vicky Clayton Silks, and it's Clay, uh, Vicky with two Ks, V-I-K-K-I-C-L-A-Y-T-O-N. So yeah, Quaker Diamonds, and the, the year on the floss is 2011, so, and I think the floss was brand new when I started this. It is now 2021. 10 years? I don't mind not gone bad it hasn't spoiled like food so I'm I'm good with that so oh I had so much fun I totally fell in love with this piece all over again this weekend so let me show you I'll show you the whole thing and then I'll point out what I did here's where it's at I think you can see it all yep there we go okay see if you saw it last video, you'll know how much I've done, which is actually quite a lot. I said I was going to finish this motif first, and I did. So I finished that diamond, completed it. It took 25 minutes, like hardly any time at all. And then I came down and I finished in this diamond. This took a fair bit more time because there was a lot more work there to do. But look at, look at the beautiful motifs in there I mean that was so fun to stitch and because I had the time and I was relaxed you know because there's, there's you know you're threading your needle a number of times for all of those different color changes and it was so fun it was so fun 
Oh, and I had to finish, I had to come up and finish this one. I hadn't done that and I had to fill in that one. I filled in that, I did that one from start to finish, fully completed this one and then I wasn't done yet. So I came back up to the top and I did, let's see, I did the Q and the little Q and this guy here and then I did the H. So the capital letter is over two and the the small cap letter is, the sorry, the lowercase letter is done one over one. So it is teeny, teeny, tiny. And then I did the Y. And then I did this motif here and these ones, these little ones. And of course these little ones that are inside the big letters, there's a lot of little interesting bits and pieces in this. So this is now finished to here. And then the next thing I'm gonna go after is this, there's another, this is the start of another large diamond, that right there. And so that will be next. I'll show you. That's this one here. So that's what I'm gonna work on next in this piece. I'm just loving it. It's so beautiful. It's been just so fun to get back to. So this is why I don't mind starting all of the things because it's not like I fall out of love with my projects. I have to say 90, 95% of the things that I've started over the last 10 years, I love just as much. The only thing that I've changed my mind on was the Glendon Place Witch's Wheel and only because I am not, I'm just not a Halloween stitcher. Still love the piece, but I just wasn't, I just wasn't gravitating towards stitching it because I couldn't imagine putting it up because we don't, we don't decorate for Halloween. So I ended up giving it to a friend, to Kirsten. Um, Kirsten, I, I've met through uh, uh, my a local retreat to me and uh, and she's, she's working on it, which has been so fun to see. So I'm really glad. Okay, oh, I don't wanna show you this one just yet. I'll show you my, what else I did. So I worked on my Colors of Venice. This is by Historische Stiegmuster, Dorothy Kanzi. And I got a great start on this, the, on the second motif to the right. I know the lighting is a bit funny. It's it's later in the day and I, I'm only using artificial light, so I know the colors are a little bit off. But hopefully you can see. It's teeny tiny. I didn't finish giving you the details on the Quaker Diamonds. I'll go back to that, I'll circle around. This is a 40 count, 40 count uh, linen and I'm using one strand of Overassois silk over two. So one over two on 40 count. And I, will, I don't have the cover photo with me, so I will, in, I, will, I will try to have popped that in on the screen somewhere here so that you can see what the whole thing is gonna look like. It's so pretty, it's so beautiful. I love that. You can see the shape of the, of the black medallion taking place in there. It's so pretty. Love it. I misplaced a length of silk that I was working with and oh it drove me wild. I just couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I think what happened was I probably picked it up on my sleeve from the couch and dragged it outside with me when I took Luna out for a, a nightly bathroom break and it's gone. Couldn't find it. Fortunately it was you know, it was a cut length, 18 inches cut length, and there were five pieces of silk left in the in the strand. Gone, just gone. So, so annoying. I searched everywhere. John searched everywhere. Nicholas searched everywhere. I showed them what it would look like and how long it was and, you know, couldn't find it. Totally gone. So, anyways, what are you gonna do? I looked everywhere. Anyways. So 
Now that I have been working on some older projects and just, you know, rekindling that enjoyment of and the pleasure of, of you know, it's, it really is like visiting with an old friend because we always build in so many memories of the time that we spent working on these things, right? And so now I've I've built another weekend of memories, Nicholas's 13th birthday into my Quaker diamonds. And I'll remember that because I suspect I won't finish this before it gets put away again. But the next time I bring it out to work on it, I'll think, oh yeah, that was such a wonderful time that we had. And he had a great time on his birthday and we, oh, chocolate cake. I know, put a, put a pin in this idea. If you need a chocolate cake recipe for a birthday or just a really fantastic dessert, I have been making the same chocolate cake for the last 10 years, 15 years, at least, I don't know, whenever she first posted it. Um, it's from the Pioneer Woman, and so that's Re Drummond. I'm sure most of you know who this, who she is. Uh, this was, I used to follow her blog way back in the beginning, and this was a chocolate sheet cake recipe. And so if I, if I remember, I'll try to put a link to her recipe in the drop down box below. Um, so it, it's very simple, uses very basic ingredients. It does call for some buttermilk, which I never have. Um, I never have buttermilk. And so I always use the milk with a little bit of vinegar trick in it to make, you know, soured milk and use that in place of buttermilk. Works a treat every time. It is bar none. The, most delicious chocolate cake simple 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 and everybody loves it so if you're looking for a really rich um, you kind of have to shut your eyes and um, ignore the amount of butter in it <laughs> because it's horrifying <laughs> there's so much butter in it but if you need a birthday cake I mean it's birthday cake close your eyes and ignore the butter if, if you can um, because good gravy this cake is amazing so I will remember oh yeah we had that really good chocolate cake for Nicholas's birthday and uh, yeah so you know we build memories into our into our stitching don't we so yeah it's fun so it's made me a little bit nostalgic for my old pieces and so I was digging around in my stash pile yesterday last night and and I thought oh because I, I saw this next one and I'm like oh I kind of feel like working on that now. So I pulled it out and I hope to have some progress to share with you next week on my Santa's Village. So Santa's Village, and I get this wrong every time and I don't have the chart with me. I want to say it's not Little House Needleworks. It is her daughter, Cottage Country Needleworks, or is it Country Cottage Needleworks? I get it wrong every time. In my head, I think of it as CCN. Um, I'm sure you know which one I mean. And if you just Google um, Santa's Village Cross Stitch, you're gonna come up with this because it's like the most popular one. And these are sold as 12 individual patterns. And so you can stitch them individually or you can stitch them all as one. And if you're looking for a fantastic finished one, um, uh, stitch all the things, Christine, stitch all the things, finished this last year or the year before. I think it was the year before now. And so I think she's got this in a screenshot of one of her videos. Christine, stitch all the things. And that's her YouTube channel. And it's amazing, amazing. So my goal is I would like to, before this goes away again for however long, I would like to, because I do, st I do decorate for Christmas. So it makes sense to me, you know, to even if I don't work on this for a few years, that eventually one day my grandkids will love this. So it's good. I'm, I would like to finish the last one on this side here. Uh, the fabric is a mystery. This fabric is a mystery. I'm going to say this has been at least 10 years as well. I don't know. Whenever these charts first came out, that's when I first started this. I have no idea what the fabric is. I do know that it's a 36 count and I'm stitching it two over two. So it's got really quite plump, plump coverage. Uh, lots of people find 36 count. They don't like two over two because it's too thick. I think I love it for designs like this because it just makes them just kind of pop right off the fabric. So there's Santa. 
and the poinsettia house. I love the bird on that. And there's the post office. And over here is, this is Mrs. Claus's cookie house, isn't it? I can't remember. But I have the chart at home and the floss is ready to go. So hopefully tonight I'll be able to put this on my frame and put a few stitches into it. So that's the plan. That's the plan. So that's what I've been stitching. That's what I've been doing. I did also do some knitting just for keeping myself honest here. Accountability for my sock knitting that I know that I'm, that you know that I haven't gone rogue and started 10 new things, cast on 10 new things because well, that could happen too, but I haven't. I have been working on my sock. Uh, on the car ride home yesterday, I completed the gusset decreases. So I am now, uh, I'm back to go, just going round and round and round. And just like the other sock, I've got that really fun, uh, that the yarn pooled, just the same as the other one. So I'm actually gonna have, I'm going to have um, twins. My socks should match. This is the Leo and Roxy August 2019 Sock of the Month Club yarn. It was a surprise when I bought it. Um, because I joined their sock of the month club it was a six month subscription and that's what the yarn looks like in the in the ball it's so fun the colors are so bright really really fun uh, and the mini is a coordinating mini that came with it it's uh, just a, a lovely basic gray and that's, I'm doing the heels and the toes in the gray. And I'm, the pattern I'm using is the one I always use. It's my friend Louise Patterson of Wildflower Wool. It is her super simple cuff down sock. Uh, I do always try to, ha I, I try my hardest to have the project information in the drop down box below if, um, if you're interested in any of the pattern information, etc. So that was my knitting. That was all I did knitting wise this week. Uh, was it was mostly all about the stitching this week and how I, I have to show this one more time because I'm just so pleased with it I'm so pleased with it love how that turned out love it so all right so I have a few other things to chat about today I did make myself a list um, the first one that I wanted to share with you is, uh, do you remember I had the winners from the first part of the funny crafting story contest? And uh, if you think back, one of the winner, one of the winner's names was Linda. Linda's story was the one of the, um, the pine cones for dinner, the burning pine cones in the oven. Uh, and so I, Linda sent me this email in response after she found out she won. And, <laughs> It just made my day, and so I asked her if I could share it with you, and she very kindly said that I could. So I thought you might enjoy hearing what happened when Linda found out that she won. So yesterday was my stepmother's 90th birthday. She lives alone, and we visit her almost every day. So we had her come to our house for a takeout dinner. After dinner, I put my laptop on the table, and we had our tea and dessert while listening to your, to your YouTube. We all had our fingers crossed and waited the 10 minutes for you to announce the winner. It was a long 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm a bit chatty. <laughs> but then I heard my name, my husband, stepmother, and myself started yelling and clapping our hands. It really brightened up a rather low-key 90th birthday. I was so excited. Please thank your family. Have a good day and good luck on your new adventure. So Linda, that was amazing. I'm so glad that you got to find out that you won the story contest on your stepmother's 90th birthday. That's amazing. And a very happy belated 90th birthday to her. So how fantastic is that? I love that. Okay, the next thing I wanted to share with you was I, there was a post on our Facebook group, the Friday Off The Grid Facebook group, and it was a chart stitched by Ellie. Now, I don't have Ellie's permission to share her last name, so I'm, I'm not going to, but she has given me permission to share her piece that she stitched. 
Um, and the reason I wanted to share this with you is because uh, Ellie used the Leo and Roxy, uh, she had the set of purples, uh, purple floss. Uh, I, for If you don't know, Leo and Roxy Yarn Co, um, they are a yarn dyeing company, very small indie Canadian yarn dyeing company, and they are now dyeing cotton over dyed by hand floss. And I sell this floss in my um, in my shop, Evertote. And so Ellie had purchased uh, the set of six purples, or maybe it was before, yeah, it was before when we had the original vamp. Um, so she had the set of five and she stitched a chart called Nevertheless, She Persisted. And it's by Stephanie Rohr from the book Feminist Cross Stitch. And so I'll just, I'm going to read to you, I'm going to pop the photo in right here while I'm reading the description of what she did, because I found it fantastic. It was such a great way to experiment using variegated floss that I thought I would share it with you. So if you look really closely, you can see what she's talking about here with what she did. So she says, this is a perfect way to start using my Leo and Roxy floss. I used two separate methods for the variegated floss for the words. I cut a strand and I used the loop method to start. For the border, I used two strands. I'm happy with both ways and glad I got to experiment on such a, oh, I took a photo of it and I cut off her words. Ah, I believe she said um, prophetic piece. So Ellie, I just think that that is so clever. So basically what that does is that you can see in the in the border so sorry for the words one strand loop method to start so you can see that the variegation has become much more subtle and then because it's a bit more muddled up right and then in the border the variegation becomes much more clear because one, two strands of floss so the colors are matched up between those two strands and then as you lay them um, you're getting that that color happening for each stitch and not having two different colors together at the same time Like in the words, so I thought that was really clever and uh, and Ellie. Thanks. Thanks for saying I could share that That was pretty neat Okay, so while I'm on the topic of Leo and Roxy floss I wanted to mention something that I've kind of got going on in the background with another youtuber you can find her channel called Cheeky Mare. And so I will link to her channel in the drop down box below because this was totally her idea. And I am jumping on her bandwagon here because I just, I am kind of excited about it. So let me go get the chart and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, it's because of this which is why it gave me the bug to get back to my Quaker Diamonds because um, Cheeky Mare, Libby, um, messaged me and this was back when the set of 10 sampler colors came out in April and she said, what do you think about subbing in those 10 colors for the Rosewood Manor Spring Quakers and doing a conversion? And I said, well, 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 <laughs> count me in because guess what chart I have had in my stash for years years. I love the Rosewood Manor um, seasonal Quakers. I just love them. Uh, so a conversion? Why not? Let's do it. So she and I are going to um, start this. We The, the 10 colors, uh, there's a couple of them that we're not sure are going to work. There's a couple that are coming out in May that are probably a better sub for one or two of them. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that's what Libby and I are going to be up to soon. So check out her channel, give her a follow and, um, and you can follow along with us. And then as once, once we've got the threads figured out, if anybody wants to join in, I'll be posting information about the conversion. If you would like to stitch this with us and, uh, yeah, it's a beauty. Look at those, look at those motifs. Look at them. Oh. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So, ah, yes. And I think that's it for that 
for information about those yeah I have a list today I had a, I knew I had a lot to talk about today so I, I made a list and there's only one more thing for me to get to today um, and this is another uh, this is another viewer email to me that uh, she had some questions for me and I thought they were really good questions for newer stitchers and so I, I said to her I said you know these are great questions and instead of me just typing them to you why don't I share them on the channel and that way um, you know if we have I, we always have new stitchers and so if one new stitcher has a question it's guaranteed that lots of other new stitchers have the exact same questions so if you're a new stitcher and you have questions feel free to email me caroline at evertote.com and um, if, if I get some questions I'm more than happy to uh, talk about them in the next video that I do and so I will also try to email you and let you know that I've answered your questions in that video because not we can't watch all the videos there's so many wonderful philosophy videos out there so if you ask me a question I'd like you to hear the answer so I will try to email you uh, so this question was from Lauren and Lauren knows that I was going to talk about this today so hopefully she won't miss it all right and I'm going to read you the whole thing because it's a fun fun email I love meeting new stitchers there's nothing better than either a brand new crafter stitcher or somebody who's coming at this from a different craft like Lauren Lauren's a knitter and she's being enabled to start stitching and I I just this I love it I just love it okay so Lauren says hi Caroline I am a knitter which is how I first met you via the fiber friends podcast I used to cross stitch many, many years ago, and I am now teetering on the edge of that rabbit hole again. Thanks to you, Carrie, Dawn, and many other knitters who are now also showing their cross stitching. Carrie is the dyer, um, one of the pair of Leo and Roxy who is dyeing the floss. Dawn is my friend um, of the codependent knitters fame from Sarnia, Ontario, and uh, they have both taken to cross-stitching. Carrie probably a little bit more than Dawn, but Dawn, I know what projects you've got in your in your bag, so let's, let's see those come out again. Uh, so she says, so many things have changed over the years. It is overwhelming. I did order a kit, a Q-snap frame, a grime guard, and a needle keeper. Okay, so in case you don't know what those are, a kit would just be, you know, a cross stitch kit like I showed at the beginning, the, the kit that had the fabric and the floss, and I think it comes with a needle too, it comes with everything. Uh, Q-snap is a frame. It almost looks like PVC piping, and it's usually in a rectangle or a square, and it has clamps that, that, that clamp onto it, and it holds your fabric. Uh, a grime guard is it's a piece of fabric that has elastic in it and usually you can find them on Etsy or hand, make, hand makers make them. They sew them and they sell them. Um, and you put that over top of your grime guard or your hoop and it keeps your fabric clean from your hands while you're holding the, the frame. And a needle keeper is just a, it's a either a button or a, a, a special, you know, memento treat or you can you can buy them people make them uh, and they have magnets on them and you put them on your project one on the front one on the back magnet on the back and it holds your needle for you uh, very very useful useful tools she says I also ordered easy count guideline now easy count guideline is that the you can buy fabric that has the easy count lines on it but you can also buy easy count guideline i think that's an actual like thing that you thread through a needle and you sew it into your project kind of like a thin fishing line is that what that is i know i've seen it before um i've never used it well that's not true i've tried it but i didn't really um, so that i guess that answers your question here your question is the whole this whole idea of gridding is new to me but i notice you don't grid and i am curious about that is it not necessary or only useful in certain circumstances i would appreciate any insight you can provide okay so gridding is basically lots of people do it 
um, and lots of people don't do it. This is one of your, your mileage may vary kind of situations. Uh, lots of people, if they're doing like a full coverage piece, like a heaven and earth design, find it very useful, um, really useful indeed, to, to buy fabric that is pre-gridded in 10 stitch squares. So it's 10 by 10 and there's a, there's a line there. So it helps you count. And usually on your pattern, usually on your chart, you'll have thicker uh, black lines on the squares designating those, you know, your 10 by 10 squares in your pattern. So it helps you count. Basically, it helps you keep your place. If you're a color, uh, a color completer, as it were. So let's say you're using 310 and there are black, uh, 310 is DMC black. And if you've got three stitches of 310 in this square, and maybe you've got five stitches of 310 in the other square, it would help you move from one place to the other without having to count all that much. Uh, easy grid, what is easy, easy count guideline, I suspect is the thing that you would sew in. You would sort of baste it in like, you know, every four or five stitches and you would make your own 10 by 10 squares on your fabric. Uh, so again, like I said, your mileage may vary. I don't do a lot of full coverage pieces like that. The ones that I do, like uh, the, my geometric pieces, it's very, they're very visually easy to see where you've gone off track. And so I, and I also tend to complete as I go. So I, I base one part of the, what I'm stitching based on something that I've already done. So I've never used it. Um, I have tried it, but I found that I, I felt like it got in the way and it sort of bothered me more than it helped. That was the one that you sewed in. That's the one I tried. I've actually never tried the uh, easy count fabric that has the grid lines already on it. And I believe what happens is when you wash the fabric, when you wash the project uh, or iron it, I'm not exactly sure, but I think those lines disappear. That's my understanding. Um, so again, try it. Why not? If you find it helpful, great. If not, well, I guess you're just out a couple dollars for the for the for the the thread unless of course it's the fabric but I suspect you'll use it anyways if, if it's the fabric all right the next question was I have also seen some tutorials on parking do you recommend that I'm not sure I want to have long strings ie floats in my work so uh, knitters when they are doing color work they will carry, so color work would be more than one color of yarn at the same time when they're knitting. And so when they're working in between the two colors, they'll carry um, one of the yarns over to the next place where they need to knit in a few stitches. And that little length of yarn that's not knit into a stitch, it's just carried over, is called a float. And so that's a really apt description of carrying thread over um, that it would that it would create a float lots of people carry their thread in the back um, you know if, like I was that example I was using before of three stitches here and five stitches over there they'd stitch those three stitches and then they'd bring their thread over in the back without cutting it off and just knit the uh, knit just stitch the next five stitches over in the next in the next grid without you know ending starting and stopping the thread and that's fine again it's all personal preference some people care about having a very neat and tidy backside to your cross stitch piece and other people don't care at all and again your mileage may vary if it bothers you fix it if it doesn't bother you it's your stitching so uh so parking what is parking i don't I don't park my threads. Again, my understanding, I, I know what parking is. It's when you, you don't start and stop with one needle. You load up lots of different needles or you have lots of different colors going at the same time. And you can either park those needles or park those threads um, off into another place on your fabric while you're working with the next color and then you don't end the thread, you simply park it up here on a needle minder, and then you go back and you take your next thread and you work a few stitches with that. So what that people who tend to use that technique uh, tend to move across their piece and not jump around. 
So they would do those two color, those two stitches in that color, and then the very next stitch in the next color, and the very next stitch in the other color. Um, excellent YouTuber, Blitz Stitch Brian, um, whose channel is called Blitz Stitch. He stitches uh, many of his pieces in a really unique uh, diagonal style. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, he has done a video on his diagonal stitching and I think he talks about parking as well. So I haven't watched that video in a really long time, uh, but I do remember finding it really interesting when I did. So maybe that would be helpful. And again, that's Blit Stitch, B-L-I-T-S-T-I-T-C-H. And his name is Brian. And he's got some amazing projects on the go, let me tell you. Amazing. Okay, so let's see. I also saw in an early podcast that you have a piece of felt or interfacing interlining between the bar of your Q-snap and the clip. Is this to protect your fabric? Um, yeah, basically, that's exactly why. It's actually a twofold reason why I use, I use quilt batting. I've always got lots of leftover strips of quilt batting. And uh, so I usually just cut for for Q snaps. I'll use a you know two to three inch strip, and it goes. I use it. Um, I always have my fabric on the in the ditch. It's easier to show you if I had I had one with me and I don't. So I'll I'll be brief because I don't have an actual one to show you. But uh, so the fabric I lay it on the table, then I put the quilt batting on top of the fabric or on top of my stitches. And then the Q snap goes on top of that, and then the clip. So the 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 quilt batting is in between the bar and my stitching, and then I put the the uh, the snap on over top of the fabric on the back side of the fabric. Uh, and what that does is not only does it protect. I feel it helps protect the stitches from being overly squashed in the snap, but also um, it help it really helps snug the uh, the snaps onto the Q snap. It gives a really great grip. Um, so if you if you've got some snaps that are a little bit older and a little bit loose, it really helps them ha have a better gives it a better grip on the project. And that's that's it. Uh, you know, you get into these habits of doing things a certain way and that's just then how you do it forever and ever, amen, until, the, until you change something slightly and then you can't, you, you forget all about the way that you used to do it years and years ago. Uh, and I think, I think that's it. And then there was a lovely little extra comment at the bottom. So thank you, thank you, Lauren. I, I really enjoyed your email and I hope that other people enjoyed, um, some other newer stitchers hopefully enjoyed that as well and maybe found something useful in there. If you have any questions, um, if you're a new new stitcher and you you know I can I can point you in the direction first of all if you haven't watched Jan Hicks creates Jan's got a wonderful series of videos out for brand new stitchers and um, I would hop over to her channel and have a look see at some of her intro videos there very very useful stuff great videos and Jan's a good egg nice to uh, nice to always listen to her voice so I hope you'll enjoy those and I think that's it. This is probably one of the longer videos that I've done in ages, but I had so much, I had so much progress this weekend. The whole time I was stitching, I was like, I'm gonna have so much to tell them on Monday, I can't wait. <laughs> it was really funny. Anyway, all right, so that's it for me today. It is now uh, 20 after five, and Sarah has been very patient. She's been, of course, here, she works with me here. Um, now that she's she's done her second year of university, she's done, she's on break. She is now working here with me. She's been winding floss for me all day today. She's been hanging out in the little kitchen net area that we've got um, waiting for me to have a visit with you today. So I'm gonna wrap things up. I will edit this video at home tonight, so it might be up a little later tonight than it normally would, but that way I can uh, I can sit with the family while, while I edit this and, uh, and yeah, and have a visit with you at the same time. So that's it for me today. I do hope to have an extra video out this week for the funny crafting stories. That's coming up probably on Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday, we'll see. 
we'll see what I get up to in the next couple of days because if you've made it all the way to the end, there's something very exciting happening on Saturday. And you're going to want to be watching for a video put out by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little, a little sneaky heads up because I'm pretty excited. I can't wait. So that's all the information I can give you today. You'll have to wait till Saturday to find out. So until then, until Wednesday, funny crafting stories or Thursday, possibly. Um, I hope you're having a great week. I hope you've had a good Monday, a good start to your week. I hope you're, I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe and that you've got some, some crafting and that's it. So on that note, I will, I'll say goodbye. Happy stitching everybody. Take care. <laughs>